Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the iBug Mac training course. This is week six. Today is April 5th. We are just about halfway through, and we will be beginning our two part series on Safari. As always, be sure to check our um, course email list, the iBug website, and social media for our upcoming events. We have a movie this week. I think it's called Catch Me If You Can. If that's not, well, you'll just have to come at 7.30 uh, for the pre-movie social and at 8 for the movie anyway. And then on Sunday, we have our iBug Cafe, and we will be talking about iPhone apps or getting at apps. I, I'm not sure, but come and find out again what that's all about. And now let's turn to our Safari lesson. As we were discussing just before this got started, I am teaching part one today, and that will cover the settings you need for just browsing web content in general with VoiceOver. Some things we can do in VoiceOver. Um, to control how the content is announced to us, how we interact with it, all that good stuff. Whether you are in Safari, Chrome, or Edge, if you must insist on using that. Then we'll switch our focus to a brief tour of the Safari app, as we did with Finder, then Safari settings, and if there's time, maybe at the end, I will introduce one very simple navigation method. Herbie will continue that next week, talking about other navigation methods with Safari will be kind of a, okay, this is kind of how you can navigate in Safari, and this is how Herbie, as a frequent Safari user, has found most, what he's found to be most efficient for navigating. With that in mind, let me share my audio. Oh, okay. You have started computer audio share. There we go. And I am going to go to my voiceover utility. And we will do that. There's a number of ways you can do VOF8. Or if you have not changed the behavior of your function keys, that's VOFN F8 or VOFN and the number eight on your number row if you happen to be using a keyboard on a uh, Mac with touch bar or you could just simply tell Siri to open the voiceover utility now that we set that up a couple weeks ago. I have created a keyboard command in Keyboard Commander for me, which is right option V, and that gets me nice and quickly to my voiceover utility. I'll press that now. Opening voiceover utility, voiceover utility, voiceover utility window, utility categories table, general, selected has keyboard focus. Just as a review, it says we are in a utility categories table and we actually don't need to interact. Although I was really using the Mac quite often last week and came in here to this utility for some reason, I just caught myself automatically interacting and there's really no harm in it. If you want to interact, by all means you can, if that's just kind of what you do. But if you remember that actually this table is just a simple list with categories, then you can save yourself a couple of key presses and either press down arrow or type the letter W to get to web. Web. Then if you've interacted with VO shift down arrow, you would uninteract with VO shift up arrow. Otherwise, if you have not interacted as I did not, we will press VO right arrow that is control option right arrow or caps lock right arrow. Uh, you should know that all by now. Navigation selected tab one of three. The first category is navigation. General tab two of three. Web rotor tab three of three. DOM order navigate web pages by selected radio button one of two. Gr group item grouping items navigate web pages by radio button two of two. Okay, DOM order navigate web pages by, or I think it's actually called DOM or grouping. And basically one of them is the way web pages were intended to be navigated or rather the, you navigate it the way it's written. If you did have a chance to do your Safari reading, the article mentions how voiceover processes information in web chunks. Instead of being you know, up and down, vertical, you can 
move across the line. You can still kind of do that in Safari, but you receive rather one big chunk when using VO left or VO right, rather than you know the simple line that you might find using up and down arrow in Windows. So are you going to navigate sites where they, you know, in the chunks or whatever, or do you want voiceover to attempt to restructure, kind of place things into groups? I found that when it does that, you generally have to interact more, but maybe there are things, if there's a large website, maybe the groups could be helpful. I've never found it to be helpful. So I just leave this setting alone. That's a lot of words for just saying, leave the setting alone. But I always like to experiment with everything. And so if you are so inclined, give it a try. It won't hurt you. And you may or may not find it helpful. Moving on. Group items within when navigating web tables. Unchecked. Checkbox. Group items within when navigating web tables. And I also leave that unchecked. Unless the table is really complicated. Rows that contain maybe additional, I, I don't know. Well, I just leave that unchecked most of the time. And if you ever decide you want to play with these options, you can go into VoiceOver Commands Help. Many of these things I'm going to talk about today are in VoiceOver Commands Help. And so if you don't want to come to the VoiceOver Utility, excuse me, especially if you just want to toggle one thing on or off, then you would go into Commands Help. Let's move on. Speak column and row numbers when navigating web tables. Unchecked. Checkbox. Speak row and column numbers when navigating web tables. I was in a table in Google Sheets, for instance. That's a whole nother um, monster in itself, or it can be. And I need info on that table, like the date, the time, a name, you know, host, facilitator. I don't necessarily need to know that I'm on row 59 of 60. Uh, voiceover can sometimes be sluggish in certain areas, and just announcing those row numbers makes it even more so. I That was one box, actually, because I had reset all my voiceover preferences to their defaults. So that was one that I actually discovered last week I needed to uncheck. Always navigate images pop-up button. Always navigate images. Uh, basically, images on a web page can either you can go to Every image, whether it has a label or not. Menu, we'll three items. These. Check mark. Always. Never. I press space to open the menu, by the way. Never. Um, so when you are using via left and via right or however you navigate, if you come across an image, is VoiceOver going to even tell you that it's there? Is it only going to tell you that a labeled with descriptions or descriptive one is there or just ignore it? Closing menu. Enable live regions, checked, checkbox. Enable live regions, those are areas of a site that frequently refresh. A couple years ago, I was trying to help somebody with the walmart.com, the, actually the grocery site, and I think it's gotten much more accessible on the Mac now. But it used to be that it was constantly telling us these prices when we were just trying to look at the items that were available. And once we turned off live regions, and again, that's another one you can do in commands help, um, we had a much easier experience. Always allow keyboard commands to navigate websites. Checked. Checkbox. This option I was surprised to also find unchecked. You may, when you check it, get some sort of notification about websites that use arrow keys. You won't be able to use them. Basically, when I think of access keys, I think of... Uh, let's say when you're in Gmail and you are in the regular view and maybe you use the letters J, K, and L to move forward through messages in your inbox or sometimes Facebook has shortcuts. Um, so basically you can use those um, and if you have Make this always box, allow keyboard commands to navigate websites, checked, checkbox, checked, then any site that for some reason uses an arrow key for one of those might not work so well, but otherwise you're fine leaving it checked. I've never found an, a site with an arrow key that was its own accessibility shortcut. Help button, help button. All right, and somehow, oh no, we didn't. Okay, I'm thinking of another area. So let's, we've visited navigation. Let's go back up to the top. Toolbar. And I do that by pressing VO Home, or that is VOFN left arrow. 
that will always take you to the toolbar, which is generally the first um, available item, or the item that you would want to interact with or do something with. You can do VO Command Home to get all the way to the Close button, but you really don't usually want to go there too often unless Command W isn't working. We'll continue Voice on. Voice over utility. Utility categories table. Web. Navigation. Select general tab. Two of three. Our next category is general. I will press VO space. Uh, when you are in an area with multiple tabs, VO space will select the tab. Selected general tab. And make it Two active. of three. Web rotor tab. Three of three. Speak web page summary when loading a new web page. Unchecked checkbox. Speak web page summary when loading a new web page. A web page summary voiceover will say something like Apple this has 25 headings, 49 links, six buttons, three frames, and on and on and on. And that info might be interesting statistically, if I can talk, but it really doesn't tell you where those things are in relation to one another. And so I don't find the summary helpful. If you want to obtain the summary, there is a keyboard shortcut you can invoke and get that information without it always ha being spoken automatically to you. Automatically speak the web page when loading a new web page. Unchecked checkbox. Automatically speak the web page when loading a new web page. Again, I was surprised the other day to find that this box was automatically checked. This is one I definitely uncheck. I don't want a page to be automatically spoken to me if I had all the time in the world and if I had the attention span of uh, who knows what then maybe I would want to you know let it read to me but chances are I'm doing a search on the web I want to find an article and I want to have found it yesterday so I don't want to sit there and listen to voice over read every little link every side story especially on a news website so I uncheck that box. Of course, you can pause voiceover speech by pressing control or a two finger tap on the trackpad, but then it somehow likes to resume itself after a while. So anything you can do to shut voiceover up, for me at least, is good. Um, and then I can get, I obtain that information is more useful to me or more memorable once I actually start exploring the site. Um, I'm kind of about using your own initiative and all those things, but if, again, if it's easier for you to have the sites read out to you, then there's no harm in that. Just leave the box checked. Speak progress. While a web page loads, pop up button. You can have it speak progress. You can have it play a tone or do nothing. Help button. And now we're back to the end and help. So I want to just review. Um, a few lessons ago, I mentioned to you the item chooser. And rather than pressing VO home to get all the way back to the top and then VO airing a bunch, um, I guess we could just try pressing tab. But one thing VoiceOver has, which is really neat, is the item chooser. You also have this available to you on your um, iPhone or iPad. And that is invoked with VO I. Control Option I or Caps Lock I. Item Chooser Menu, 27 items. The Item Chooser is good if you know the exact thing you are looking for. Most of the time you might not, but I know, for instance, we want to go to Web Rotor. That is the third category in Web that we want to explore. I'm going to type W. Five items. Web. Cell and 21. I think that's, I don't want to spend all my time typing Web Rotor. So I'm just going to press down arrow. Web Rotor, tab, three of three. And then press enter to move there. Web Rotor, tab, three of three. And VO space to activate the Web Rotor. Selected Web Rotor, tab, three of three. I'm picking on Web Rotor because later on, when you use Web Rotor to, if you use that to browse through links and headings or whatever on Safari, you'll locate the element that you want to use. Um, so you'd type VOU, and then let's say you want to move by headings. You'd press the right arrow to get over to headings. You'd find the heading you want, or maybe links is a better example. And then you would press VO space or enter to get to that link, but you'd actually press VO space or enter again to activate it. So that's just a little preview of, you know, how you could use the web rotor in Safari. But in this case, we're using item chooser. 
Anyway, we have selected Sele web, rotor. web rotor, selected tab, and three three. now we'll look at the options here. Select a checkbox to enable or disable an item. To reorder the items, use command up arrow and command down arrow. Okay, the web rotor there, as I've said, there are almost innumerable web rotors on voiceover. And one of them is the web rotor. Well, the way you arrange the web rotor also is how the order in which the quick nav rotor and the trackpad rotor will be arranged. Well, what is quick nav? I keep bringing up this term. That's something we'll talk about in a little bit. It's basically a way of navigating without having to hold down the VO keys. Um, and that has introduced its own set of advantages and challenges, but we'll talk more about that later. So now we want to get into this table where we can organize the items in the web rotor. Item order table. No selection. Okay. If so, if I just down arrow in this table. Headings checked checkbox. Links checked checkbox. Form controls checked checkbox. Okay, that's nice. But we actually there's two components. We want to one be able to check or uncheck these boxes so that they appear or not in our rotor, and two, we want to reorder them possibly. In order to act upon an item in a table, you need to interact. So if you're just trying to view what's there, chances are you don't really need to interact. If you want to make changes, then you need to interact, and that's a good principle to follow in tables. Or if you need to, in a table, if an item contains, you know, additional items inside of it, you would interact. So it's all about what you want to do. What is your end goal? And that's what you have to think about when choosing to interact or not. So we are going to interact, and I'll do that with VO shift down arrow. Once you have quick nav enabled, you'll simply be able to press down arrow and right arrow. But for now, VO shift down arrow. In item order table, row three of 20. Item order form controls checked checkbox selected okay, and item. This is how I have my order my rotor arranged. Some of the things are a little bit different than how I might want. So link headings checked headings checkbox. Headings is at the top. Um, that is one I that is probably my uh, that's the most prolific on the website is headings. Uh, websites that don't have headings can be a bit more challenging. But then you find other things. Um, links checked checkbox links you want to generally get to links right away form controls checked checkbox form controls are everything from buttons to text fields that you fill out when you are completing a form tables checked checkbox tables um, you can jump directly to a table if you want web spots checked checkbox okay web spots are areas of a site that you might bookmark and i'm probably you can bookmark websites. You can set a bookmark or a favorite. But there's also, if there is a link or a section of a web page that you always go to as soon as it opens, you can have VoiceOver set that as a web spot so it's that much easier for you to come back to without having to browse through and navigate through all the other links and content that occur before whatever it is you want. So the way to... Let's say you want web spots to be further up in the rotor. We would press command up arrow. Web spots checked checkbox. And I haven't even pressed up arrow yet, but it's uh, telling me what's focused on. Okay. Move up, move up. Okay, and it was taking a little bit to register me pressing move up. Now if I up arrow and down arrow headings checked checkbox okay somehow i moved it Web above spots, headings checked, so i didn't quite want it up that far so i am now going to move it below Web links spots, checked, so i'm going checkbox. to press command down arrow twice move down move down and there we go if i up arrow links checked checkbox and now i go down Web spots checked. Check there we box. have web spots. Form controls checked. Tables checked. Checkbox. Landmarks checked. Checkbox. Okay, landmarks are actually written into the code that's uh, built websites, and landmarks are areas that a developer thinks you might want to come to uh, quickly. Generally, the home link is a landmark, or the navigation menu, uh, main content, there are several things that are designated as landmarks.
Uh, those could be useful if you don't find headings on a website or if it's just a lot of different text with hardly anything else, you might find using a landmark to be potentially helpful. But if the developer really hasn't included headings, um, how much are they going to include landmarks? I don't know. But it's one thing to try if you are in a hurry and you're trying to quickly find info. You're, I spend most of my time online not necessarily going to specific sites, but just doing internet searches. And so I have to try to figure out what sites are going to, uh, what navigation methods are going to work best when I'm carrying out those searches. Frames checked checkbox. Okay, frames are almost like pop-up windows, except they actually occur in the same window where the website is. They generally contain additional information, usually maybe some type of a dialogue or whatever, or an ad. Sometimes frames contains advertisements. Sometimes they're not that useful, but it can be good to just know about them, have them in the rotor in case, you know, a site makes heavy use of frames. Articles checked checkbox. Okay. Articles are great. They generally indicate the start and the end of an article. Maybe the entire article won't be under this um, article thing, but you'll be able to quickly find the beginning. Um, AppleVis makes heavy use of articles. And let's say I want to move that up. I don't really care so much about tables or frames. So I'm going to press articles, command up check, arrow. Check, check, move up, move up. And move that up a few. Tables, check, articles, check, move up. And I'll check, press one up. more time. Okay. Tables, landmarks, frames, check, auto web spots, unchecked, check box. Auto web spots. Those are areas of a site uh, that VoiceOver tries to help or identify that could be important. Again, if a site has no headings, very few links, I might try to use auto web spots to help me move through. And I'm going to check this box by pressing VO space. Checked. And I'm also going to move it up Auto twice. web spots. Move up. Move up. Tables. Check. Article. Tables. Actually, I check. think I want to move it above tables. tables check. Move up. All right, and Article, we can just auto continue. Web spots, check, landmarks, checked, frames, checked, buttons, unchecked, checkbox. For some reason, buttons isn't uh, checked. Again, a, as I said, a button is a specific type of form field. You might want that checked. Um, generally, I like to use what's called single key website navigation. So it might be easier for me just to press B for button. Checked. But it's good to have options. Text fields, unchecked, checkbox. Uh, text fields, you can, those would be kind of like using the E key on NVDA um, or F on JAWS. Again, we can check these. Checked. I generally check most everything available in the rotor, even if I don't use it frequently, it's there in case I need it. Uh, some people only want to have maybe two or three, maybe four things checked in the rotor. So you will be able to decide what works best for you. Images unchecked checkbox. Images, that's not really something I care about too much. Lines unchecked checkbox. Lines, that can, I don't know if that's so much useful on a website, but you could check it anyway via space. Checked. Lists unchecked checkbox. Lists, if you might want to check that if, um, checked. Again, that would be like a list of, I don't know. That, like an outline, and you can create lists in an outline. Live regions unchecked, checkbox. And then we have live regions. I will check the box, VO space. Checked. Non visited links unchecked. Visited links unchecked. Oh, checkbox. visited links. I definitely want to check that. And that one, we really do want to move up. Um, unfortunately, all we could do is press command up arrow several times. And I'll do that. Visited move up. Move, 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 move up. And I'll press up arrow. Tables. Check. Visited links. I'm visited going links. To move up. That above tables. Form control. Let's visited see. links. Visited links. Check. I'm check going box. to move that above form controls. Move up. And you get the idea. We won't be spending all night, but you can basically check the placement of things by pressing your up, your down arrow, and then up arrow table. to Articles. kind of gather the info on where something is being moved to. Auto web landmark frame buttons text images lines checked lists check live regions non visited link radio groups unchecked static text okay, un radio, radio groups, groups unchecked checkbox. Um, some sites do make use of those rather than radio buttons. Checked. 
Static text unchecked. Checkbox. Static text can also be a useful way to navigate if articles and headings, landmarks aren't working. Um, you can move past the a block of links to the next text. I don't always find that super reliable, but again, it's something to try. Checked. Checkboxes unchecked. Checkbox. Now, why wouldn't checkboxes? Well, I guess that's also part of form fields. Anyway. Checked. And that is all of the items in the rotor. Again, all of these things apply whether you are in Chrome, uh, Safari, Firefox. All of these things in the web category pertain to whatever browser you choose to use. But now we are going to visit the navigation category in the VoiceOver Utility table. We'll do that. Um, so you can actually press tab if you want. Check boxes, checked, check box, vertical scroll bar, leaving item order, web rotor, selected tab, three of three. But instead of it being taken to the table, we get taken to the last tab that had focus. So again, for better consistency, I just recommend using VO Home or VOJ, if you want to jump directly into a table or from a toolbar into a table, and we'll be using VOJ more in Safari. General navigation utility categories. I pressed VO left a couple of times. Now I'm going to press N for navigation. Navigation. And now VO right. Keyboard focused item. Initial position of voiceover cursor. Pop up button. Okay, so when you are moving between open apps and windows, do you have your uh, voiceover keep your place or do you always want it to focus on the first item in the window? Menu, two items, first item in window. And sometimes that's useful if you know you always want to come into a toolbar um, or, you know, it can be a little bit, if you don't remember, let's say, we'll find when I open the preferences inside of an app and that you know, I was maybe viewing something halfway down the window. My cursor is going to be there even the next time I open those preferences. So you kind of have to get used to that. Standard grouping behavior pop up button. Okay. Becky sent out a whole podcast about this grouping behavior and the differences and when interaction is required and not. And so I strongly encourage you to go back and find her email or find this in the Applevis podcast feed. It's one of the top ones up there because it's been recently released and you can learn all about grouping. Keep in mind if you choose to have menu groups, for book and groups, announce um, groups, only announced groups. or ignored, closing, you might, okay, you might be able to avoid interacting, but you'll have to navigate through a whole bunch of other things sometimes before you come to what you really want. So interacting can streamline your process of navigation. You just have to know um, when it's best and you will figure that out over time. Synchronize keyboard focus and voiceover cursor. Checked. Checkbox. Synchronize keyboard focus and voiceover cursor. If you ever, uh, one time I was helping someone attempt to install uh, one of the Mac OS systems and she was entering her password. Well, the keyboard was one way area voiceover was another and that password was not getting entered and I came into her voiceover utility and somehow this setting got unchecked I believe it is checked by default there are keyboard commands you can use to obtain or learn about the status of your cursors where they're at uh, VOF there's basically three cursors in voiceover the keyboard cursor the voiceover cursor and the mouse cursor and most of the time, you don't really have to worry too much about those. But if you just leave these settings at their default, um, at least that one, you should be in good shape. Follows voiceover cursor, mouse pointer, pop up button. Okay, mouse pointer. The default is actually ignores. And on some areas, that could be really useful. On the Amazon site, for instance, when it's set up follows and you attempt to do a search, VoiceOver will just continually get stuck in a whole bunch of information if you're trying, if you're moving result by result. It'll get stuck in one result instead of allowing you to move on. So in that case, it could be useful to have it at ignores. 
The other day I was trying to get my braille display to cooperate with voiceover and, you know, into the messages field when I was attempting to send messages and setting this to follows actually helped. Um, so again, you'll figure out which apps you might want to have it set to ignores. That is the default menu, setting. Menu, items, moves voiceover cursor, ignores voiceover cursor. Closing menu, allow cursor wrapping, uncheck. Allow cursor wrapping. Basically, if we go all the way Checkbox. to the end. Skip redundant label, automatically interact when using tab, enable fast. Um, if we keep going, eventually we'll get to the last item, usually a help button. And then if we were to view right one more time, we get to close. That would happen if cursor wrapping was enabled. I choose to have it Automatic off, skip but redundant. that is your preference. Allow cursor wrapping, unchecked, skip redundant labels, checked, checkbox. Skip redundant labels, I leave that setting on. Automatically interact when using tab key, checked, checkbox. If you choose to fill out forms online and use the tab key to move between items, you might find it useful to have tab automatically interact um, in the area. So enable fast searching unchecked checkbox. One thing to keep in mind, fast searching. I've never really fast gotten that Fast searching allows work. you to use the command key a letter to find the next item on the screen that begins with that letter. Sorry, I'll let you hear it. I'm talking over the voiceover hints. Automatic enable fast searching unchecked checkbox. Fast searching allows you to use the command key a letter to find the next item on the screen that begins with that letter. Or rather, that's the help message, not necessarily a hint, but right continue. command key. Enable fast searching, dimmed, pop up help button, help button. All right, and we are now done with navigation. If so, we can quickly look at commanders, and I'll show you the options pertaining to quick nav. We'll go back to the top with VO home, toolbar, VO right, voice over utility into categories, the table, table. navigation, commanders. commanders. Via right trackpad so numpad tab, a number of times. two and four keyboard tab, quick nav tab and four here four. we are on quick nav via space selected quick nav tab four of four and via right enable quick nav unchecked checkbox it is unchecked because allow toggling of quick nav using left and right arrow keys checked checkbox you can allow toggling of quick nav using left and right arrow keys um and that's a just a good way allow to turn it of on and off in Safari, generally that's the only area I use Quick Nav, and so I need to remember to turn it off when I go into other things. I'm finding even some sites in Safari where it's more useful to have Quick Nav off. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the popular um, Wordle puzzle. There is an accessibility extension for it, and it is a bit easier on that site to use it with Quick Nav off. Um, and so I do. Anyway. Enable single key web page navigation when using quick nav. Checked. Checkbox. Enable single key web page navigation when using quick nav. That allows you to type H for heading, B for button, F for form field, T for table, L for link, K for landmark, and the list goes on and on. And you can also toggle the setting on the fly by pressing VOQ. Assign commands button. And here we can look Assigned. at not only the quick nav commands you have, but then you can assign new ones. And there are some that, you know, I would possibly like to assign. For example, there's not one for moving directly to the web spots that you've created. There's a voiceover command, a VO command right bracket, but there's no quick nav command. So anyway, Another way to acquaint yourself with all the quick nav commands is to turn quick nav on, go into voiceover commands help, and learn about them that way under the quick nav category. Help button. Help button. Okay, that is all here. So we are finally going to close the voiceover utility or quit it with command Q. Zoom us. System dialog. And April 5th, 7, 35. All right, we're still doing good. Let's now go into Safari. Um, again, there are a number of ways of doing that. We can go to our dock, but tonight seems to be the night of using our keyword commander. So one option you have is right option S. Um, Safari. Untitled window. Toolbar. Unfortunately, what I don't like with the right option S is there's no indication for a couple of seconds that I've pressed it. 
And so I find that when I go to the doc, DOD, SA, enter, I get more feedback as to what I'm doing. But the keyboard commander still works. So if it's easier for you to press right option S, then um, by all means do that. You can also just ask Siri to open Safari. All right, let's take our overview tour of the window. Um, toolbar. We are at the toolbar. To the left, of course, you have your clothes, minimize, and uh, zoom buttons. You have the title of the window. In the toolbar, we can In interact. Toolbar. 11 items. You will remember me saying from last week, the toolbar contains a few items that sighted people might want to get too quickly to click on. Um, they aren't entirely necessary for us, but hide sidebar button. You can choose to hide the sidebar. Um, again, you can also go into the view menu, or as we'll find out later, use the really helpful shortcut command Shift L. New tab group menu button. You can create a new tab group. New tab group. Tab groups are new in Safari in iOS and macOS, and to me, they don't seem to have a whole lot of value. I guess it's kind of a way if you are working on a specific project and you are using a number of websites incorporated in that project, you could save that as a tab group. Um, but I don't, they interfere with the proper displaying of my bookmarks bar, at least from Safari session to Safari session. The tab groups are come up. So anyway, it's something to get used to. Go back, dimmed, menu, go forward, dimmed, menu button. As we talked about last week in the study session, uh, we have a go back and go forward. Same thing you can do in the finder as in Safari, and those commands are command left bracket and command right bracket. But you have that in the toolbar for anyone who, for some reason, you know, has a hard time using the keyboard. One password button. That is my password manager. It shows in the toolbar. Sometimes I need to go to the toolbar to bring it up. Privacy report dimmed, but smart search field search or enter website name, edit tab. And the, then we have the smart search field, which you can actually get to directly by pressing command L. Share dimmed, but new tab button group. Some of these things are dimmed, such as, such as share because we don't have a website open. Tab overview button. Tab and then you overview can do a button. tab overview. If I an interact. Out of toolbar. Sidebar table. Default tab group with one tab. And it's Selected. talking about tab groups. Now I can, if you want to explore sidebar the sidebar. Table. Default tab groups. Expanded one tab group with one tab. Level two. Received links. Um, Level so one. So these are, you know, it's identified certain types of tab groups already. Tab group. The reason out of this. Once we hide the sidebar, so if I do Command Shift L, hide sidebar, full screen toolbar, vertical, vertical. It's hidden. You have a vertical splitter, and to the right of the vertical splitter will be your website content. If I close Safari and relaunch it, then the sidebar will be hidden. But if you want to do something like show the bookmarks sidebar. That's great, but then when you load Safari again, you'll have this tab groups sidebar. So what you choose to display in the sidebar tends to not stay consistent consistent uh, from Safari session to Safari session. All right, with all that aside, let's go into the menu bar with VOM. Menu bar, Apple, Safari. And the first item we have is Safari. Let's look at this menu. Safari menu, 11 items about Safari. Safari extensions, ellipsis. Safari extensions actually takes you to the app store where you can search for extensions. Preferences, ellipsis command, comma. There's our old faithful preferences always accessed with command, comma. Privacy report, ellipsis. Settings for this website, ellipsis, dimmed. Settings for this website. We will come back to that once we actually go to a site. Clear history, ellipsis. And you can clear history. This is an easy way. Um, if keyboard shortcuts are cooperating with you, you can simply go into the Safari menu and then press CL and get right to it. Press enter and you would be good to go. Services, submenu, hide Safari command, H. And then we have those, you know, view things, services, hide Safari, hide others that really don't do us a whole lot of good. So I'm going to press right arrow to go to the next menu. File, menu, 17 items. Okay, and I'll press down arrow to get to the first item. New window command, N. 
New private window command shift N. New tab command T. In Safari, if you want pages to open in tabs so that you would just press control tab to move between them, you press command T. That opens a new tab. New empty tab group command control N. New tab group with this tab. Open file. Ellipsis. Command O. Open location. Ellipsis. Command L. Open location is also the same as opening a URL or a website, and that is done with Command L. Close window Command W. Then you have closing a window, and whether you've opened something in a tab uh, or a window, you close it with Command W. This is true whether you're in the Finder or in Safari. Close all windows Command Option W. Close all windows. I, I did mention that command in the first or second lesson. And that again, that applies to any app you use. If it has multiple windows open, you can close all of them with Command Option W. Close tab dimmed. Delete tab group dimmed command control W. Save as ellipsis share submenu. Export as PDF. Ellipsis dim import from submenu. Export submenu. Print ellipse new window command N. And we are back to the beginning. Edit menu 16 items. I'm not going to go through edit. View menu 20 items. All right, and here we have our view menu. Check mark. Always show toolbar in full screen, dimmed. You can't really uh, uncheck this option because it's dimmed. Customize toolbar. El customize touch bar. Ellipsis. Always show tab bar. Show favorites bar command shift B. Show status bar. Command show sidebar command shift L. Show bookmark sidebar. Command control 1. Show reading list sidebar. Command control 2. Show reader dimmed command shift R. And reader is a setting um, you can use on many sites. We'll talk about that next week. Show tab overview. Command shift backslash. Show downloads dimmed command option L. A lot of these I just want, I don't expect you to remember each one and it's a lot of info to take in. I just want you to be aware that you can come to the menu bar for these. I want this hopefully to be a sort of planting a seed, so to speak, or whatever. And you might think next time, oh, there was something about this in the menu bar. So stop, dimmed, command, reload, pay, stop, dimmed, command, period, reload page, dimmed, command, R, translation, submenu. You can use, um, Apple does have its own translation service. Actual size, dimmed, zoom in, command, plus, Zoom out. Command text encoding. Sub enter full screen cap. F. And we are back at the beginning. Check mark. Always show toolbar in full screen. Dimmed. There we go. History menu. And then 23 you have items. history. And we'll go through that next week as well as bookmarks. bookmarks. Menu develop menu. 31 items. Develop menu. Most of the things that you probably don't even really need this menu. There is something called a user agent. If you ever want to load a website in the settings or the view that um, apply to another browser, the develop menu and the user agent allows you to do that. Window menu 18 I help menu three item help. search result okay. interactive. Let's Safari get out of here new. by pressing window. escape. Closing menu. Vertical and speaker collapsed on left. Untitled let's window. Let's go in to Toolbar. preferences with command comma. Preferences general button. First thing we have in our toolbar is general. It's not being announced, so it's selected. So let's just press VO left general to verify button. that is we are indeed at the beginning. VO space to select. Edit text. Blank. And then it nicely takes us into an edit field. Again, we don't really have any context for that field, so we could press VO left. Empty page. New tabs open with pop up button. But it's not really giving us a whole lot. So let's go back to the beginning with VO Home. Toolbar. And then VO Right. A new window. Safari opens with pop up button. Okay, how do you want Safari to open? And we can look at the choices here by pressing space. Menu for items. Check a new private window. All windows from last session. If you tend to close out things in a hurry or forget that you wanted to save something, you might want it to show. All windows from a new all windows from last, last session. session. All non-private windows from last session. Or all non-private windows. Closing menu. Empty page. New windows open with pop-up button. So when Safari opens with a new window, does it open with an empty page? That's my preferred setting. I tend to like things blank, and then I will go to what I need. Menu six same page. Um, same page. Tabs for favorites. 
tabs for favorites. Choose tabs folder. A start page. Uh, you, so there is actually a start page introduced in Safari a couple of iterations ago that contains your favorites and any other like news or things you can add to your start page. Um, there's a way to customize that if you wish. Home page. Or home page. Check mark. Empty page. Or the back to the empty page. Closing menu. Empty page. Empty page. New tabs open with pop up button. New tabs is the same options. Edit text blank. All right, this field is not identified, but here's where you would type in a home page if that's what you desire. And maybe you do always go to a page. Uh, maybe you have a page for your work that you always have to open and, and you want that to load every time you open Safari. You can put that in here and then make sure that new tabs and windows open with your home page. Set to current page home page dimmed button. If you're actually on a website, you can press the set to current page button. Pretty self-explanatory. Manually remove history items pop up button. Okay, I used to have history clear every day and that's probably still a good thing to do. I've just gotten lazier. Sometimes I just don't like to always enter my login credentials into a site. And so I do have history clear manually. But you have lots of choices in here. Menu, six items. Check mark. Manually. After one day. After one week. After two weeks. After one month. After one year. Check mark. Manually. And then back to manually. So you could choose. Closing menu. Favorites. Favorite shows. Pop up button. All right. So when you choose to show the favorites sidebar, does it show favorites or does it show one of your bookmark categories? I have a number of them like uh, temporary. Uh, transport, whatever, just, just different categories. So favorites could show one of those as opposed to the actual favorites folder. Ask for each download. File download location, pop up button. Okay, file download location. We had a discussion about this in the study session last week. Do you prefer to have your files always go to the downloads folder or do you want to choose a different spot each time? I choose a different folder because I'm downloading a variety of content and I don't, I'd rather just set it all up once, you know, send it where it's going to go rather than have to come back to my downloads folder later. But that's just personal preference. There's no harm in setting this option however you want. Menu, three items, check mark, ask for each download, other, ellipsis. Other would allow you to actually choose a downloads folder. If, for instance, you prefer the downloads folder in your iCloud rather than in just the one um, that's in your user folder, or maybe I could always send things to setup files in my Dropbox, but if I'm downloading a book, I don't really want it to go to setup files. Downloads. So that's why I choose um, ask for each time, or you can just choose the default downloads folder that's part of your user folder. Closing menu. When Safari quits, remove download list items, pop up button. Okay, remove download list items. That's not actually the items itself, it's the record of what you have downloaded. And so again, you have a number of options here. Menu for items, check mark. When Safari quits, upon successful download, manually, after one day. And I just prefer. Check mark. When Safari quits. Uh, when Safari quits, because I may Closing want to refer to the record of that download a little later on in my browsing session, but again, that's entirely your preference. Open save files after downloading unchecked checkbox. To me, it sounds like it's always saying saved, or, but it's actually saying safe. I have verified how this is spelled with voiceover, and well, we can be a right to read more of the explanation. Save files include movies, pictures, sounds, PDF and text documents, and archives. Okay. Again, I don't, if I'm not ready to read a book right away, or if it contains the number of files that are part of a daisy book, it wouldn't really make sense for that to open because we need a special player or app to play daisy files. So I choose not to have that checked. Now let's go back to our toolbar with VO Home. Toolbar. And interact. In toolbar. 10 items. General. Select tabs button. Okay, tabs. This contains Tab a lot of items, some of which here will be useful to us, some aren't. Out of toolbar. We'll tab layout. Here. Separate. Tab layout. Separate. 
All right, so it actually tells us what tab layout we've selected. Separate, selected, toggle button. Um, lots of these changes were introduced in Safari in um, whatever the system is uh, that we're on right now, uh, Monterey, and I don't really know what the difference is between some of them. They could just be visual. Compact, toggle button. Always show website titles and tabs. Checked, checkbox. Uh, that could be useful. It used to say something about showing icons, and um, I would uncheck that. But Automatically. Open pages and tabs instead of windows. Pop up button. So when you, let's say you go visit a link in an email or wherever, is it going to open in a new tab or are you going to have several windows open in Safari? Again, just like in Finder for us, you can have several tabs open in one window. For us, it's simply do we use Control Tab or Command Accent? Navigation. Sep Command Navigation. Separate. Okay, is navigation separate? Um, that's not really something there we can change. Command click opens a link in a new tab. Checked checkbox. When a new tab or window opens, make it active. Unchecked checkbox. I can't remember if the default is to make it active. I tend to, if I'm browsing, I might want to open something that's referenced, but I not, might not want to get to it right away. So that's why I have um, it unchecked but you can choose what you want, or maybe it doesn't really matter. Use Command 1 through Command 9 to switch tabs. Checked. Checkbox. So if you don't really want to type Control Tab, you can also uh, you hold down Command and press the numbers 1 through 9 if you have up to 9 tabs open. Command. Click. Opens a link in a new tab. Command. Shift click. For us, it will be Option Enter, I think, that opens a tab. Um, in a new link in a uh, link in a new tab one of them command enter is used for downloading and i even get these messed mixed up in my head so that why that's why that article that i assigned on safari from apple this is a great resource because it has these commands listed there um, they are mac commands so i'm not going to find them in voiceover commands help but if i know where some of the safari commands are listed i can quickly go to that article and find them, or you can just try it out. If um, command enter is not opening my article in a new tab, well then it's probably I need to press option enter. Opens a link in a new tab and makes it the active tab. Command, option click, opens a link in a new window. Command, option shift click, opens a link in a new window, help button. All right, and so those are really things you would do holding down the keyboard while using the mouse. Uh, those things aren't relevant for us. Let's go back to the beginning. Toolbar. Interact. In toolbar. Autofill button. Okay, autofill and view of space. Autofill selected. Out of toolbar. Using information from my contacts autofill web forms. Checked checkbox. Edit. Using information from my contacts autofill web forms button. What this does is actually open, open contacts to edit your card. Yeah. It opens your contact card in the contacts app, which we are not going to talk about, but I imagine that will be contacts will be part of a lesson in this course at some point. Um, but anyway, usernames and passwords autofill web forms checked checkbox. Usernames and passwords that uses the keychain iCloud keychain. Edit. Usernames and passwords autofill web forms button. And you can either use Remove this. Remove saved names yeah. and passwords. You can either use this edit button or you can go into the toolbar and there is a passwords button. And that takes you to the same place. Credit cards unchecked checkbox. Credit cards. I don't have that checked because I have my other password manager take care of that. Um, you, let's see if we view right. Edit. Credit cards button. So you have Edit to actually remove. add credit cards to use in Safari. If you ever set up Apple Pay on your Mac in the wallet on system preferences, those things won't show in Safari credit cards. Um, if a site allows you to use Apple Pay, then you'd be able to select one of those cards you've set up in wallet. But if you just want to use a credit card, then you would need to add it into Safari. If you want to use a credit card, whether Apple Pay is configured on a website or not, you add it into, you check the box and then add it into the credit cards. Other forms, autofill web forms, checked, checkbox. 
Uh, you may have filled out uh, forms on other websites. It can kind of save that form information for those specific websites. Edit other forms, autofill web forms button. And you can choose to go in there, see what remove sites. Remove websites with save autofill information. Yeah, remove websites with save autofill information. Help button, help button. And there we go. That's autofill. Toolbar into passwords. Button. Passwords. Okay, if I press VO space on this button, I will be prompted for my to use my watch or my touch ID. And then we could actually go look at the passwords and the usernames. I am not going to do that. I don't think it would show the password. It would the passwords would be concealed. Um, but anyway, it's pretty self-explanatory. Search button. All right, search. I will VO space on search. Search selected out of toolbar. Uninteract. Google. Search engine pop up button. Okay, you have a number of choices. Menu five items. Check mark. Google. Yahoo. Bing. DuckDuckGo. Ecosia. DuckDuckGo. I Closing. prefer Google. I know there's more ads. I know there's more tracking, but it's just it finds what I want more quickly. So, again, like I said, I'm the type I'd rather have the info yesterday. <laughs> Include search engine suggestions. Smart search field unchecked. Checkbox. Um, I turn all these off because that just makes voiceover more chatty. If I'm trying to type in a search term and I hear suggestions, I mean, that could be useful. And then you would use the down arrow to get to those. But I generally want to hear suggestions once I've actually loaded Google. Um, so anyway, include Safari suggestions dimmed unchecked checkbox that is dimmed because include search engine suggestions include search engine suggestions is unchecked include Safari suggestions dimmed unchecked Ch enable quick website search checked checkbox quick website search you can basically if there's a site I think Wikipedia is an example um, actually I saw one of so in the ACB, we have a reading group, 18th century reading group, and the um, leader for that event has a website. And so I could actually, if I typed in invisiblebooks.wordpress.com and then I typed in a search term, that would actually search the site for that term. Um, so anyway, that's just an example. That's one of the sites. Manage websites button. You can manage the sites. You can, um, in dialogue, edit or website delete them. to remove dimmed website table. No selection in website you table. You interact. Open Spotify.com. See why Spotify has one. I don't know. Website, website, open website, website. Oh, I guess I deleted the invisible books one out of here. But anyway, remove, you get the but, idea. Remove all button. Done. Default button. Manage website. And if you've seen one add or remove uh, thing, you've seen them all. Preload top hit in the background smart search field. Unchecked. Che Preload top hit in the background. Show favorite smart search field. Unchecked. Checkbox. When you can actually show your favorites in the sidebar or go into the bookmarks menu in the menu bar, I don't see a need to have them shown in the search. Help button help button and that's it for search we'll go back to the beginning toolbar interact in toolbar Ten security button and then we have security this basically you can everything here is checked by default um, warn you when you're visiting a fraudulent site and use JavaScript if for some reason you're having problems with JavaScript you can go into security and turn that off privacy button privacy we'll just go in here quickly VO space Privacy selected. And interact with VO shift up arrow. Out of toolbar. Prevent cross site tracking. Checked checkbox. Basically, leave everything checked here and you will have the best of Apple's um, privacy uh, that it has to offer. Hide IP address. Hide IP address from trackers. Checked checkbox. Your IP address can be used to determine personal information, like your location. To protect this information, Safari can hide your IP address from known trackers. Link. Learn more. Cookies and website data. Block all cookies. Unchecked. Checkbox. Manage website data button. If, so, as I mentioned, I like to have some of that info saved uh, for sites that I might frequently log into. Well, if there is a particular site that I want to delete uh, the cookies for, I can do that by coming into Manage Website Data. Apple Pay and Apple Card. Allow websites to check for Apple Pay and Apple Card website tracking. Checked checkbox. Safari allows you to make purchases on the web using Apple Pay and Apple Card with Touch ID on this Mac.
Dimmed. Web advertising. Allow privacy preserving measurement of ad effectiveness. Checked. Checkbox. Help button. Help button. And there button. we go. That is uh, privacy. Toolbar. Going back to the toolbar. In tool websites button. Okay, websites. Website selected. Out of toolbar. Preferences table. Reader. All selected. Right. So in this table, you have a lot of different preferences or categories. Content blockers. Autoplay. Page zoom. Camera. Microphone. Screen sharing. Location. Downloads. Notifications. Pop-up windows. All right. So if I go, for instance, Reader. Um, just as a review, I mentioned last week, or maybe I didn't, you can go to the first item in a table or list with option up arrow, the last item with option down arrow. If we go to autoplay, content blockers, autoplay, because that seems to be um, come up on sites and then it, the content plays and you can't hear voiceover. Allow the websites below to automatically play media. Website settings for autoplay table. And I no guess selection. there are a few that I have allowed. Um, COVID ski ORG. Allow all autoplay pop up button. QC salon dot net. Allow uh, all autoplay. Yeah. COVID okay. ski but anyway, you could come in here and if you wanted to remove that permission in from website one of these settings sites, for all in COVID, allow all autoplay pop up button. Um, you know, we could choose to block it here. Out of um, COVID ski ORG. Out of websites. And remove button when visiting other websites. Stop media with sound. Pop up button. I have, for default, when visiting other websites, stop media with sound, because like I said, most of the time that stuff is very Help intrusive. Button. Help button. And that's just one of many categories that you can customize. Later on, when we go to a website, there is actually a setting in the Safari menu uh, for settings specifically pertaining to that website. So you don't have to come all the way here into Safari preferences. Let's go back up to the top. Toolbar. In toolbar, interact. Ten items. Websites. Select extensions button. Okay, extensions basically allow me to turn on those that I already have. Um, Bullet web pay permissions for fixerific. Oh. Permissions for. Okay, so this is a Twitter out of extension. extension. Um, Uninstall button. Basically, it shows me information about the extension to the right. I can, if I move left, I can uninstall. Find trends and who to follow in the fixerific image. Table. Um, I don't know if they remember unchecked that checkbox. extension, but it is unchecked. So right now it's not even enabled. By being unchecked, it is not enabled. If I go into In the table, table, one password, check checkbox. One password is enabled. Um, I could uncheck the box here. That's why I interacted with the table. And then that would turn it off. Out of table. So um, let me go back up to the toolbar. toolbar. In tool, advanced button. And finally, we have advanced. Advanced really selected. Only a couple Out of things of here. Smart search field. Show full website address. Checked checkbox. I think it's useful to show the full website address. If you, for instance, choose to share a link with somebody, share a link to the page that you're currently on, you can go to the address bar with Command L, select all of the content in there with Command A, copy it with Command C, and paste it into an email. And it's a little bit easier to do that. Smart show full website address checked checkbox. When show full website address is checked. Accessibility. Never use font sizes smaller than unchecked nine. Never press tab to highlight each item on a web page checked checkbox. This setting is frequently unchecked by default. T a press tab to highlight each item on a web page. I, if it's unchecked, I think it only goes to links and doesn't allow you to go to buttons or other um, form fields. So you might want to make sure this option is checked if you like to make frequent use of the tab key. Option tab highlights all items except links. Show color in compact tab bar, unchecked, checkbox. Reading list. Save articles for offline reading automatically, unchecked, checkbox, none selected. Style sheet, pop up button, Western, ISO Latin 1, def change settings, proxies button, show develop menu in menu bar, checked, checkbox. Uh, you can uncheck or check that. I used to occasionally use the develop menu to see if I could get some sites to work better by choosing to have them, um, like to choosing to have Safari mimic another browser. Again, that's called a user agent, and that's in the develop menu most of the time, or you probably won't even uh, want to use this, but it is an option. Help button, help button. And we Toolbar. are done. So now let's go ahead and close the window. 
Safari Preferences opens as its own window, and we'll close it with Command close W. Close window. Untitled window. April 5th, 8, 0, 5 p.m. All right. It is already 8.05. Wow. So I am going to open up for questions right now, and then next week, Herbie will have all of the bit to do about browsing and navigating, either with Quick Nav on, using keyboard shortcuts, uh, whatever the case may be, and or using VO keys. Herbie, do you want to allow people to unmute? Are you in that window? All right, perhaps he isn't, so I will do Zoom it. Us. You have started Zoom computer us. audio. The host muted everyone. Close system dialog. There's fake. Oh, hold on. Zoom us as new be. system dialog. You are sharing computer sound. Oh, I see what I did. Hold on. Uncheck. I checked the wrong box. Or... <laughs> oh, no, I did. Yeah, no, everybody can unmute themselves. Yeah, that's right. I did. Yeah. Yep. Chanel, I accidentally muted you, though. Currently oh, unmuted. Well, well, well. We're well, just well, trying well. to get him in shape for next week, you know. Anyway. I was right. Sorry, I didn't. It was quicker for me to just to do what I was doing instead of, you know, unmuting and things. I'm sorry. It's okay. No problem. So, Kim, do you have a question? Um, no, I didn't. I just, I when he was trying to do that, I'm like, I'm going to unmute myself. All right. So, I didn't have That's a fine. Okay, you're good then. Um, does anyone else, does anyone have a question? So I do have an assignment for everybody for next week. Okay, well. If there are any sites that you want me to, you know, mention on how to navigate, I'm not saying I can get to all of them, and some of them may be spread out through the study session as well, but if you email between now and Friday, any, you know, if you each give me one site you uh, want me to, if you have questions about, I will try to incorporate it into my lesson and we'll just see what I get from responses, email it to the list. And um, if we have any common sites with people that works out great too, you know, like, um, uh, Herbie, I don't need to email but... it. it you'll, you'll know it just, it's an easy, a common site that everybody knows. Amazon. Oh, <laughs> oh I love that website. I'd be more than happy to. Okay. Oh, so yeah, incorporate, I'll incorporate, I'll use Amazon yeah, as a demo. Amazon. That's right. All right, Amazon. I love it. I love it. I do so use that trouble site. With that thing sometimes? Oh my gosh. No, I'm really, uh, yeah. well, I'm really happy. I, I'm actually really happy. Wow, people have been making me happy tonight. Um, that we will, I will definitely use Amazon as a site and uh, talk about uh, how to use it for sure. I won't go through like every uh -huh. nook and cranny, but I will at least walk you through the uh, overall process. So, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. cool. That sounds good. It's Becky. Yes, Becky. Uh, I had a website recommendation I could send, or I can do it in the email, whichever you guys prefer. Well, do you do you know it off the top of your head now? Audible. Ah, that's another oh, one. Oh, sticking with the Amazon family. Okay. <laughs> and you might you can also send it to it. It might be a good idea. This I might I should remember Audible, but it might be a good idea to send it again. Sure. Another site maybe I'll show you all is Zoom, so you can all download the Zoom app on your Mac for program. Ooh. I did <laughs> that once already. I just had to remember how I did it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, already. Um, so, question, okay. Uh, yep, go ahead. Oh, but our only question was about how to use Reader in Safari. All right. That's another one I'm actually going to be demoing We're gonna, for you next week. Okay. Um, and I'm week. going to find, I can think of a couple sites that are really good for Reader mode, especially. So I'm definitely going to talk about Reader mode, why you want to use it, how to use it. Mm -hmm. So that is actually going to be part of uh, next week's lesson. Okay. This is Michelle. Uh, good evening. Uh, would you be using your website to, to show us how to do the reader? Uh, um, it would be nice to go over your website because I get a little confused with so much um, you mean the information. Today you mean the iBook Today website? Yeah, yeah. The yep, I can show you how to navigate that one on the app Mac, no problem. Yay! Another site that we tend to use is um, AppleVis, and I'm also going to give you a website that you can test on. Now, 
you do get a benefit because previous lessons used this website, but I think instead of using it as a instead instead of demoing it to, I'm going to let you all use it as a practice. So I think we're going to change things up a little bit just to make things interesting. So, um, but I think we're going to show Amazon, Apple, this audible, if I can squeeze that in, <clears throat> if not, then I'll include it as part of the study session. I will show iBug and zoom website. So I think those are the sites I'm going to be showing. Um, if anybody else has any questions about a particular website, you use the e list to email me if I can squeeze it in i can't i will if i think i need to answer your question privately i'll do that instead but um we're gonna make things a little bit interesting so now i know where i'm going with this guys i had yeah. another idea maybe that could be for a separate discussion on the clubhouse all right well uh, what's your idea let me know and i'll tell you what i think okay <laughs> get out of the way oh um, <laughs> i would love to know how you guys i mentioned this before but then i forgot the answer go me Google Sheets on the Mac, if you guys like it better than iOS. I tried it in iOS and oh, yuck. Yeah, it the is one... better on the Mac. I can't really show you um, yeah. a confidential sheet that I get into. That's the only thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll to see what I can do. But one thing I can tell you is that there's actually been a discussion about Google Docs on the uh, list just now, and one of the big recommendations is make sure screen reader mode is enabled. So. Yep. Oh yeah, that's for that's for all okay. operating systems. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This is Kim. I yes. have a question mm -hmm. about tonight. Sure. Um, where, tell me again, where I go to make um, the tab highlight things for like filling in forms okay yeah <clears throat> you'll want to go into your safari preferences uh with command comma once you have safari open and go into your toolbar and go to advanced and then uninteract with the toolbar and via right and you will find it there with a number wait, of wait, other wait. things oh, okay on. okay i uh, can't rail that fast <laughs> sorry Commit a command comma. Yep. And then I will be in a toolbar. Yep. Or you you can find it okay. if you're not. Okay. Yep. Go to advanced in the toolbar. Okay. And then you will interact out of the toolbar and um, look for the option that says press tab to highlight each item. Okay. Image, and then you are then sharing then. computer sound. Okay. Yep. Okay, thanks. All right, are there any other questions? I have a question, please, Boomi. Yes, Boomi, go ahead. Um, when or if I if I enable cursor wrap, will it um, affect on the web as well? Um, yeah, I think actually it would. Okay. Yeah, so go ahead and play with it. Give it a try. See if you like it. Okay. It's Becky. Yes, Becky. What's cursor wrap? Is that like word wrap? It's kind of like, so if you get all the way to the end, if you're using via right to navigate and you go all the way to the end, usually, um, you know, some like where we were at, the last thing would be a help button. If you <laughs> press via right one more time, it would take you all the way back up to the close button and then the minimize button, you know, and so it rather right. than you know, pressing VO home to get all the way back to the beginning, you can, um, it, you know, you just kind of keep wrapping around. Right. So. Okay. Yep. I thought that was on by default, depending on the app, but I wasn't sure. Um, you can generally do a lot. Of, if you're just using the arrow keys by themselves, right. you can do a lot of wrapping in the menu bar and dock. Um, and even in things like Zoom and whatever, but if you are using the voiceover cursor, you actually you actually need to turn wrapping on. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And we are actually at the end of the class time. So I don't, does anyone else have any other questions? I don't want to go if there are questions, but if there aren't. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. We are done. Uh, thanks for coming. See you at Thursday's study session. I will, I've actually, I, was at last week's. I will try to make this one and we will go from there. So thank you very much. Hey, thanks, Chanel. Bye. Thank, thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.